Some big news, uh, LSU football staff, uh, something we've all known is going to take place here for a long time, even in, in the season. You kind of heard whispers and, and things about Kevin Falk being the, the running backs coach and Tommy Robinson going you know, potentially somewhere else, and that does, in fact, happen. Um, Tommy Robinson, um, new running backs coach at Texas A&M. Billy Lucci had that first. Bruce Feldman had the uh, LSU officially official. Kevin Falk as the running backs coach. I love the move, to be honest with you. Uh, and Tommy Robinson did a great job. This isn't yeah. anything against Tommy Robinson. But you had a recruiting coordinator. It wasn't from Louisiana and all those type things. Uh, I've sat in, in meeting rooms with Kevin Falk. The guy absolutely knows the X's and O's of it. He gets through to the young man very well. Uh, last year, he would take John Emery, Ty Davis Price, to the side. And he was really kind of their you know one-on-one -on -one coach. He would have him before practice and... They have a relationship with him already, Chris Curry as well, which I think is very important as you're breaking in a new running back for the Tigers in this 2020 season. This man can walk into every living room in Louisiana, and they know exactly who he is. All eyes on three, right? He has a Super Bowl champion rings that he can wear into those houses as well. Those mean something. And I've said this for a long time. You might disagree with it. That man right there, Kevin Falk, is responsible for what LSU is today. He was so needed when he came to LSU. When guys were going to Florida State and Miami from Baton Rouge and New Orleans, he stayed at home. He went to LSU. And I understand, oh, well, they went to an Independence Bowl. What do you mean? They went to these kind of bowl, peach bowls. He was the standard that started what LSU is now. And there's a reason LSU's worst season since 2000 has been eight wins. And you've seen other programs like Florida win four games, USC be a hot mess. Kevin Falk, in my opinion, is the one player you could point to and say, he changed the culture. He made it cool to go to LSU. He made it cool to stay home, be from Louisiana, and go play at your state school. He's an LSU man. He's an absolute living legend. I love the fact that he is going to be the running backs coach at LSU. How do you really feel about it? Yeah, that's how I feel. I think it's good. I mean, the, the one thing is that he doesn't have any experience recruiting out in the field, but you get that. It's talking to people and They've got a staff that's really good at it, and he'll be just fine. He's got a ton to sell, and he knows a ton. I'm just fine with that part of it. The other parts of it, you know, in terms of recruiting it, on campus, that's a guy who can connect with the stars in Louisiana and tell them why you should play in Louisiana, and that's a big deal to, for kids in New Orleans to hear that. And uh, so I think that's great. I don't have any doubt that he can coach running backs being the where he played in the NFL – what he was asked to do in the NFL. It's he's got every characteristic you can possibly want in that spot. And like you said, Tommy Robinson did a very good job at LSU by any standard that I could observe from the outside. The running backs were good, the recruiting classes were good. That's kind of his corner of the store and everything worked out. I think that you've got a head coach that is so locked in on recruiting, so organized with recruiting, put such a focus on recruiting that having a recruiting coordinator switch, he's the recruiting coordinator. Like yeah. that he's right. he runs this show. Yeah. So I, I just I don't think I, it's that big a deal. A lot of times, sometimes it's a title. It's a title that gets you a different salary mm -hmm. and those type of things when all the sure. coaches recruit their ass off, right? Uh, I, I do love the fact that now you have three former Tigers on staff with Ensminger, Kay Falk, and Corey Raymond as well. I think that goes a long way. It might not go a long way in other places, but as you've heard me say on this show numerous times, in Louisiana, there's one, and that's LSU. Other places, there's two, there's three. Not here, there's one, and that is the Tigers. And I think that goes a long way. And I understand, you know, oh, I doesn't have any recruiting experience. And that, that's a fair question. It's different when you're that guy. He can get into doors that most people can't. He can get into doors that a lot of people can't. Let's put it that way. If Kevin Falk shows up at West Monroe High School and they don't have time to talk to you, they're going to make time to talk to Kevin Falk. If he shows up to John Curtis or John Aaron, you name the big school, they're going to have time for Kevin Falk. They're going to make time for Kevin Falk. He's going to get maybe a meeting that somebody else from another school is not going to get. And that so that that's a that's a piece of it. The other piece is this guy played in one of the most difficult offenses his entire NFL career. He won championships. He sat next to the greatest quarterback when it, when look, Tom Brady if if there's a group it, it's it's only three guys, but he's one of the greatest quarterbacks. He sat next to him in meetings every year of his NFL career. He picked his brain. 
he's going to be able to pass that knowledge to a very young LSU backfield, and he's young enough to be able to know how to get inside their heads as well. I think that's very important. I saw him so many times. Look, at, look you didn't have to coach Clyde edwards Lair. You just didn't. Clyde is, is a different breed, and he was a veteran player. So when I say he would take the other guys to the side, he would after practice, before practice. Like you would, you know, you'd have moments when you're able to talk to him. Now he can't do any, he couldn't do any coaching, but he could instill those, you know, those things in their brain that he learned throughout his career. And it's obvious that they had identified that this is the guy that they wanted as part of the staff at some point. And so they were going to make that happen one way or another. So I think A&M gets a good hire, good coach. I think LSU replaces him with the guy that, they're comfortable with, and the beat goes on. I'm very intrigued when he actually gets to be able to be the coach. Because, you, you have, look, you have to have an off-the-field role when you're, when you're in his spot a year ago, and you don't get a chance to get to the nitty-gritty, right? And I'm excited for him to get the clicker, for him to be able to go coach those guys, for him to be able to be fully, fully hands-on. I, I think it's a great move for LSU. And Tommy Robinson goes to an SEC West opponent. And, you know, there's some intrigue to that. As well, I mean, Texas A&M has, they now have Josh Hen Henson as the offensive line coach who's been at LSU. They have Bradley Del Pivoto. They now have Tommy Robinson. Of course, Jimbo Fisher was mm -hmm. at LSU. They have James Coley, who was a GA at LSU. That's five guys on their staff that have ties to LSU. Yeah, and I want to beat him by more than we beat him by this year. So 43 is not enough. You think they're going to print that on the cups? They're just the biggest losers I've ever seen. The fact that a regular season loss, when you had multiple regular season loss uh, losses, is the key code to get into your football facility by the score. That they are so obsessed, it seems like, with LSU. The I mean, printing the score of cups it's, in a game that you lost four times. I mean, all those things. It's all I'm going to think about, and all I'm going to talk about when we get to media days and into camp. All I want is for A&M to lose four games next year. Somehow, some way, we got to get them to four losses. But there will be an excuse, though. There will be an excuse when they play nope, this those game. Are out. Jesus, they know. Jesus came on no, the field and he intercepted no. the ball that killed him. They know third. now that's over. Do they? They do. By the way, you don't use excuses in the SEC. It's the Southeastern Conference for a reason. There's a reason that people pay millions upon millions to get the rights to the best game in the SEC. There's a reason that CBS only airs one conference. There's a reason that. It just means more, huh, Palmer? I need four losses from them big time. I'd love that.